So really interesting question came up on the channel the other day. Someone was just asking which engine I would recommend. They were looking at a Skoda Octavia, I think it was the VRS model, and there were two engines really on their shortlist, the 2.0-litre TSI and the 2.0-litre TDI. So it's really a question of which engine would be better for you, the diesel engine or the TSI engine. So in this video, we're just going to look at the sort of things that I would look at when weighing up the pros and cons of these two engines. A lot of it is going to come down to what you actually want from the car. Do you want a real fun car to drive? Do you want a car that is just reliable and rock solid? Do you want a car that you can add fairly easy upgrades to and take those power levels to new height? Also, how you use the car comes into it. If you've got the diesel engine with a particulate filter, you don't really want to be driving those short distances. You want to make sure that DPF gets up to temperature so that it can do its thing and burn off the soot particles that build up within it. But the modern DPF is far different from those early ones. So the DPFs they fit on cars now are much more reliable. They can cope with much more driver abuse. So they can cope with these shorter journeys to a certain extent, but I still wouldn't recommend a diesel engine with a particulate filter if you only do short journeys, if the car's never up to temperature. So by short journey, I really mean the car doesn't get up to operating temperature. You really want to be up to operating temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes minimum, and you want to go for a fairly long spirited drive every week or so just to keep things working smoothly within the filter. So looking at the two engines, you've got the Skoda Octavia 2 litre TSI. So I'm not going to drill down very, very specifically. We're going to talk very generally about these two engines and what you can do to them. And we're looking at roughly a 2020 model. So for some of us, that's going to be a little bit outside our price range, but it certainly gives us something to aim for. You may well be watching this video in two to five years time when this car is depreciated and it's now in your radar really for prospective cars that you're weighing up. So the 2 litre TSI offers 241 horsepower. That's good for a 0 to 60 sprint of about 6.6 .6 seconds. So that will feel pretty rapid. That's certainly an enjoyable car to drive. So the quoted MPG on that is 38 to 40.6 MPG. The annual road tax is 180 pounds a year, which is the same as it would be on the diesel model here in the UK. So the two litre TDI spec is putting out 197-ish horsepower. So most people would just count that as a, a 190 or a 200 horsepower. We tend to round up or round down when we talk about engines. And that's good for about 55 to 56.8 mpg. So it's more economical than the TSI engine. So using the calculator that I built on Torque Cars, if you go to torquecars.com, look under the tool section, there's a whole raft of calculators that I've used. They're things that I really wanted myself when I was buying cars and weighing it up. And this one allows you to put the two mpgs in, the fuel cost, because bear in mind that the cost of diesel is very different in a lot of areas to what it would be for your gasoline or petrol. So taking that into account, you can also put an annual mileage in and it will calculate the annual fuel cost based on those factors. Now, obviously, fuel prices will vary. The examples I've chosen now are UK prices. They're fairly expensive. I've chosen premium fuels on both the diesel and the petrol or the gasoline model. On the TSI engine, the fuel cost is 165.9 pence per litre. So 12,000 miles would cost you £2,332.57. The diesel, however, is 175.9 pence per litre. And for 12,000 miles, this works out at £1,728.99 per year. I don't know why I didn't round up there, but there you go, 99 pence. It's an important figure. So that's an annual fuel difference of about £604. So that's fairly significant for most people. In general, though, when driving the diesel, you'll get closer to the manufacturer's quoted fuel figures, whereas the TSI engine, the MPG will drop considerably if you drive it particularly hard. So there's a lot more variability within those TSI engines than there are in the diesel engines. When I had my diesel engine, I found that I still got reasonable fuel economy, even if I drove the car relatively hard. Obviously, if I granted it, I could hypermile it and get that little bit more out of it. If you up this to 20,000 miles a year, the difference difference in price escalates to about a thousand pounds per year. So that's then a significant saving in fuel. You've got to weigh up the overall servicing costs of both cars. But if you use the fixed price servicing at the main 
dealers, generally they're about the same. They charge the same amount for a two litre engine. The diesel engines tend to be more reliable over time. There's less things that go wrong on diesel engines. And on the TSI, you will probably chew through tyres at a fairly alarming rate. You've got all that power on tap. You've got a fantastic 0 to 60 time. So you are going to be exploiting that. That's probably going to put extra wear on other components within the engine and drive train itself. However, if you drop the mileage to 8,000, you see much less of a saving between the two fuel types. And if you're only doing 8,000 miles a year, you are probably doing a lot of short journeys. Now, short journeys are things that these particular filters do not like. You've also got to bear in mind as well that to a certain extent, your gasoline and petrol engines now come with particulate filters. So they are generally much more reliable and less problematic than those diesel particulate filters were. And today I haven't heard very much in the way of bad experiences about these gasoline particulate filters or petrol particulate filters that are going on these modern engines. So for fun, the TSI will feel quicker. It's the more fun car of the two. If you look at tuning options, it's interesting. If you go to a, a remapping company or a tuning company and you take the engine ECU and just change the parameters within it, you will generally see about 40 horsepower extra on both engines. So the 197, you can take up to about 240 fairly easily. We're not talking about other mods. Obviously, if you do other mods, you'll be able to get higher power figures. And the TSI will go from about 241 to the 300 mark, which is fairly respectable. If you want to push things further, it's probably fair to say, just based on my experience and talking to people with these engines, you tend to get more power out of the TSI engine when you start adding other upgrades in, whereas the diesel engine is quite highly tuned from the factory. So you won't be able to push that as high as the TSI engine, or certainly not do that as cheaply as you can on the TSI engine. So the differences between the engines is even more muddied because now you've got hybrid versions coming out. So there's a 1.4 TSI, which still puts out 241 horsepower and returns a fairly respectable 43 miles per gallon. So if you just wanted a car to drive off the shelf, it might be worth going for that one instead of the two litre models. But if you certainly want to tune it and take the power up to higher levels, you won't go anywhere near as high as you can on the two litre engines. There's no replacement for displacement, as they say. So the more displacement your engine's got, the more power you can make over time when you start adding other mods and tuning the engine. So I hope this has just given you a little insight into my thought processes on the two engines. The diesel engine engines are certainly reliable, they're cheaper to run over time, they're less exciting to a certain extent to drive, you've got to change gear more often. If you've got the automatics, the lovely DSG gearboxes that they have on these, um, you won't really complain too much about having to change gear, it'll be a fairly seamless process. But the TSI, the 2 litre TSI engine, really is a, a sparkling performer, it's fun to drive, it's engaging. The gear ratios are quite nicely set up on the manual versions of these engines, but the DSG just adds something else to it. So it's certainly an automatic setup that I would consider buying. But a lot of it really depends on how you drive the car. If you only do very short journeys and the car is very rarely up to temperature for any longer than five or 10 minutes, you are probably going to have more problems on the diesel than you will on the TSI engine. So I hope that's cleared it up. Please boot the like button if you found this video useful. I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so because we'd hate you to miss out on all the content that we're pushing out. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.